Judge, you gonna agree again? I've heard your argument. I'll, I'll, I haven't made a decision as of yet. Yeah, it's still in them already won, bro. Without even, even if they don't get this case tossed, they done already won. And I ain't gonna hold you. The state looking pretty desperate and stupid like they didn't do their homework. Check this out. Uh, let's play 408 40 to 409 <coughs> or actually 408 40 through uh, 411.05. No, sorry, 408 
Your Honor, my objection to what the playing of what Investigator Gaither says is that Investigator Gaither, again, not the intended declarant of these statements, these out-of-court statements, is essentially making an argument that the jury will hear that this is, it's a future dangerousness argument. It's an argument that, you know, you're either on the side of the quote-unquote gangsters or you're on the side of the people that are trying to protect children. It presents a false dichotomy and also it invites the jurors to consider subjects and consider things that are not supposed to be in their purview as the finder of fact. Well, future dangerousness, protecting the community. Okay, tell me where in this particular, from 359.50 to 411.05 that you want me to invite me to look at for future dangerousness. I believe it is around 410.55 where essentially Investigator Gaither is saying to Mr. Copeland, you're not cooperating. You said 410.55? I believe it's... Can you give me the page references for that, please? I don't believe that he's saying this. I don't know. And essentially... No, around 410. I need to know the... Oh, let me get 410. Yes, ma'am. That will be around page 28. All right. And I don't have the transcript in front of me, the state's transcript, but the part that I'm referring to is where she says, Woody, you know, you're not talking. You're not cooperating. You might not care about your little girl, but I do. I'm going to protect your little girl. And I think that's improper. It puts the... Again, it improperly presents this dichotomy where the police are the good guys and the protectors of children away from, you know, the bad guys who are out warring in the streets. And I just believe that that's an improper statement. A, it's not true, but B, it's an improper statement that invites the jurors to consider things other than the evidence in this case. Okay, you're saying that... Okay, I'm looking at page 28, line 10 or thereabouts, Detective Gaither. I'm not saying everybody out to get you, but the folks that are out to get you, obviously they're coming for you. And me as a police officer, I don't give two shits about your life, but I care about your baby's life. Right. But when I care about her life, Detective Gaither, she can't get Copeland and my life and my girl life, Gaither, exactly. So help me, help me do this shit. And then Copeland, they out now. They, they, they out there by self. By they self. But then you're not telling me nothing. That's Gaither. Right. And he says, because I'm in jail. And then she goes on to say, you're here right now. And this is page 29, starting page 29. They out there by themselves. And the folks that shot at y'all are probably still out there as well. Probably still out there as well. In my most strenuous objection is just about the comments about protecting his daughter. I don't think that's appropriate. Any other portions that you want to 
marijuana point. It, 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 are, you, are you saying that the entirety of it, or are you just saying the, the, that particular section? Right, that particular section about the, the, the child, and I, I think that fails under uh, 403. It's not probative. Again, it's, it's the investigator talking. Um, so she doesn't have any personal knowledge of the, of the facts of this case. It's not really the witness presenting evidence. And, uh, again, I think it's, uh, confuses the issue and it's likely to inflame the passions of the jurors and it's prejudicial to our clients. Well, if, 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 what? there was some testimony that Mr. Copeland was in a vehicle with with his um, significant other, his baby. Outside of his house. And they were shot at. Yes, this, okay. this is... This so is, they were shot at. So, yeah. so, 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 I'm sorry. This is, this interview, just for context, is two days after that. Yes. So, uh, you know, I, I mean, it's not... I mean, she's got some basis to ask him those particular... Qu- ask him the, or appeal to him in terms of what he... You know, what's going on in his life and... And her investigation, like, don't you want to you know, get at the folks that, or at least tell who it is that that, that shot you, shot at you? Well, let me let me. Because she's investigating. I'm not. I'm not correct? criticizing her questioning of Mr. Copeland. Of course, yes, yeah, she has the right in the interrogation room to appeal to whatever she wants. I'm just saying, not every, even if it's, even if it's quite honestly, if, even if it's decent interrogation techniques, doesn't necessarily mean the the words of the officer are exposed to the jury and and that's that's my issue it's i'm not saying that she broke any rules in the interrogation i'm just saying that those appeals are not necessarily um appropriate to uh expose to the jury can i respond okay uh, tell me again how it's future dangerousness well, it, it's it's an improper appeal to protect the community. It's 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 creating the impression in the jurors' mind that the police are out here protecting children, um, and that these gentlemen and this back and forth between um, Mr. Copeland and other individuals, and, and the state would say individuals seated back here, and this other group are putting these children at risk. And what I'm saying is if the uh, if Investigator Gaither was on the stand and said, you know what really bothers me about these things that I've been investigating all these years? It's that these bullets come out of these guns and they're coming at children's heads. We would all jump up and say, objection, objection. That's improper. What What is she saying on the stand? So I don't, I don't know why it's allowed in just because it's on a tape as an out of court statement. It's still I, making the same appeal. I don't think appeal. she's making a general, I don't think she's, uh, she being gay through, I don't think she's making an individual appeal for protection of the community. I think she's making an individual appeal to him because he's the victim of a crime, a purported crime at that point in time. So, but I, I, I've heard your argument. I'll, I'll, I haven't made a decision as of yet. State? Yes, Your Honor. So I want to address a few things. First, this future dangerous argument is not a proper argument for what occurred in the interview room. Future dangerous solely talks about an open and closing argument referencing to the jury that if you don't find these defendants guilty, then this will occur in the future. That is that is what future dangerous references. It has no bearing on an investigator who's trying to investigate a crime appealing to the victim as to why he should come forward with who harmed him. That is what Detective Gaither was trying to do. Secondly, Your Honor, the defense early in our trial made a number of cross-examination efforts to talk about police officers and the fact that they only target a community, that they only arrest certain types of individuals. And what this invest, what this video shows most importantly is that 
she was trying to get Mr. Copeland to identify who did this. But secondly, that the police aren't just trying to arrest people. They are not just trying to get individuals charged with crimes, but yet they are trying to investigate crimes, hold individuals accountable, and make sure that those who are victims are are no longer victims. And so what Detective Gaither is doing in this portion is appeal, trying her best to appeal to Mr. Copeland, who has some concern about giving up an individual who is concerned about snitching. And that's what you're going to see later on in this interview. And she's trying to get him to identify who did this to her, who did this to him and his child and his child's mother, Your Honor. And so given one Copeland himself on the stand says, in all these interviews, they were just out to get me. They were out to get Thug. They were out to get me. This is a complete contradiction to that because Gaither isn't trying to get him. Gaither isn't trying to just get Thug in this interview. Literally, she's trying to identify who shot him. So one, it's impeachment by contradiction to show Gaither's, um, how Gaither was interacting with him. Two, she was trying to get Mr. Copeland to identify who the person was that he saw shoot at him. She can use certain investigative tools and tactics. Mr. Steele said yesterday, all day long, I want to show that this is how they investigated cases. Well, this is a part of that. This line of questioning is how they investigated cases. And when Mr. Steele says, well, I want to show these bad portions of it, then this is in contradiction to that. This is her using her investigative tools in order to get a, a victim to come forward. So for that reason, it should come in. And then this future dangerous argument is not relevant for what occurred in this courtroom. So for those reasons, Your Honor, we would um, ask to play these portions of the, of okay. the recording. All right. Um, anybody else other than Mr. Shark wish to be heard on this, on the first three um Redactions, 359.50, 4, 40, or 408.40 to 4. Now, I'm working on a video for next week that's going to kind of show that Miss Love and Miss Hilton ain't getting along. And I'm going to be fair. As much as y'all want to hate on Miss Love, she's the only one that could defeat Woody. And her past experiences definitely with Woody screwed this case up. Miss Hill ain't ready for the big leagues like this, bro. She just not. And on top of that, Miss Hilton, you're proving what Woody said. Woody said that he had a relationship with Gaither. That's what he said. Even to the point where Woody was in trouble with the police, on two occasions, they said we're going to call Gaither. In the damn interrogation room, he said, I'm going to call Gaither. You said that Woody didn't, Woody up here saying that basically Gaither wanted him to say anything. We do, are, are we not going to acknowledge that these cops have definitely had conversations with people off the record? Miss Gaither even says so as much. She said patrolling the neighborhood, you will get information that you normally wouldn't get. So I'm just curious, when the hell are we going to tell the truth? Oh, because you can't. The problem with everything is that here's the strategy. I'm going to prove Woody is a liar, says the state. But I'm going to prove Woody is a liar, says the defense. But the problem with it is, is I'm going to prove that he's lying for this way. And you're going to prove he's lying for this way. The funny part is nobody is going to be able to prove what part Woody is lying on? I don't believe, this is what I truly believe about Woody, from everything that he's shown us to up until now, from the past all the way up until now. Buddy basically is selfish as hell, would have said anything to get out of the situation and did not give a damn. He said at one point in time, I was paranoid, I didn't know who to trust, so I didn't really care. I believe that, I do. But I also believe that nigga looking out for himself didn't care what he would look like to anybody else. DK essentially said the same thing when he said, bro, I would have I would have lied. I would have said whatever to get out to go see my kids and everything. All right, cool. Or not cool. 
Do we not want to admit that everybody that came up for the state, the state has to literally turn around. Some of y'all new here. Some of y'all new to this YSL case. So let me help y'all. DK, uh, Tick, and now Woody are all being charged with basically lying on the stand. Go look it up. Every YSL official member that we think is a member is all getting charged with impeachment from Tick to DK to now Woody, which means what? Y'all are dumb. Y'all should have tried to find some people who were quote unquote wanting or willing to snitch on these people to try to do it that way. For y'all to get up there and run with a crew that basically says slime and don't think that they wouldn't slime their own homies out. You got to be doing drugs or you need to start doing drugs. I think that what the state thought was that if they came with the idea of saying, hey, we're going to give you these deals. And what you're going to do is you're going to go on that stand. And you're going to tell us everything. All right. Yeah, I'll tell you guys everything. Yeah, but the crimes, they were. 10 years ago so i really i don't even recall see there was a specific x this is one of the worst things that happened with the damn rico that they have as far as the plea agreements the alpha pleas that these dumbasses took never specifically outlined what they did in said cases the worst thing that they said was ysl is a game so if trial ended it today could he be found on a hey, young thug is a gang member all right what you doing, 50 to 60%? Well, he already did that in jail already. So he's going to be walking free. Or in a couple of months. So when we're looking at it, what specific acts are people saying that they did to help contribute to YSL? Because honestly, it's not there. Nobody said, hey, you know what? I did this, I did this, I did this. Thug told me to do it. Sign my name right here. So... When we're looking at it, we got to go, these are stupid-ass plea deals. And on top of that, you trying to impeach every single person on there? Are you trying to come up with a grand plan at the end to say, you see, this is the power that Young Thug has. Young Thug has the power, essentially, to make all these people get on the stand and then lie. But then the people would have to easily just say, you know what? Thug did all of this. But why the hell do we need to do all that? If they were smart, the plea deals would have said, as soon as you get on the stand and plead, and we got you to do everything, you can come out of jail. And even if they couldn't pull that one off, they could say, you know what, pending, we'll give you bail or whatever. They could have modified it in some type of way. So the fact that they don't have any specific acts tailored specifically to take down Young Thug, bro, I'm going to keep it authentic with y'all. This is looking dumber and dumber. Even even Shard and the judge had to go. So what was the point of listening to 14 hours of goddamn testimony? Like, what? Did, I mean, of interrogation videos. What is this exactly going to do? Because like I told y'all in the first videos of Woody, hey, man, check this out. There are a bunch of names that he said that cats didn't even go to jail. And I told y'all, a lot of this stuff he was just making up. It was flying basically out of his mouth just to make it sound good. That's why they don't mess around and believe too many of these snitches because what is a snitch really doing? He's breaking street code. He already signed up for an oath and he broke that oath. That's why when y'all see all these snitches, they still get jail time. <laughs> and if Gator really gave a damn, I'm gonna keep on pounding this damn gavel on the, to the goddamn shit burst. If Gator or any police officer gave a damn about Woody and his kid getting shot at with him in the arms, why didn't they offer him the ability to jump into witness protection? Because they didn't give a damn. They did it. So this is the dumbest part about every police officer and all you idiots who go into investigation rooms, interrogation rooms, and whatever kind of rooms, and just get to run in your goddamn mouth. They don't give a damn about you. And with this case, it's not going to matter. Everybody celebrating this stuff and everything like that. This is only going to be justice for Young Thug and some of his homies. It's not going to matriculate to regular black people. It's just not. Now, there may be new case law that comes out that can help ordinary black people. But at the end of the day, and forget even just black people, lower class Georginians, people who don't got money, people who can't afford certain things. This Young Thug trial doesn't help them. So please... When I say this, 
Just understand, this is just a victory for Thug and his homies. But it ain't a victim, I mean a victory for the regular person. This just show you how effed up the system is and ain't shit gonna happen. At the end of the day, I'm glad I got your attention.